Ukraine has expressed growing concerns over Russia's efforts to extend its sphere of influence through the deployment of the African Corps and allied Russian private military companies in several African nations. The Ukrainian Ministry of Foreign Affairs announced this. Russian mercenaries inflict an irreparable damage to the stability and security of the African countries, fuel internal spats and conflicts, cause an increase in human losses. They are engaged in illegal mining and expropriation of valuable minerals of these countries to finance the aggressive war of the Russian Federation against Ukraine, the statement said. Ukrainian diplomats state that immigrants from Africa and the Middle East who are being fraudulently or coercively sent by Russia to fight against the Ukrainian people regularly fall into Ukrainian captivity. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs appealed to such foreigners to avoid joining the Russian army by all means and, if sent to the front, to use the I Want to Live project at the earliest opportunity to voluntarily surrender their weapons to the Ukrainian Defense Forces and save their lives. We strongly condemn the Russian Federation's cynical use of African and Arab citizens as mercenaries who are utilized mercilessly by the Kremlin regime as cannon fodder in battles against the defense forces of Ukraine on the territory of our state, Ukraine's Ministry of Foreign Affairs emphasized, calling on the governments of friendly countries in Africa and the Middle East to publicly condemn such actions by Russia and take all possible measures to stop this criminal practice. According to the universally recognized norms and principles of international law and the UN Charter, Ukraine is a victim of illegal, unprovoked and unjustified armed aggression by Russia, the Foreign Ministry emphasized. Therefore, it is the international duty of all states that respect the principles and goals of the UN Charter to help protect the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine within its internationally recognized borders. Only through unity and strength, the world can give a worthy rebuff to the aggressors and invaders wherever they are, the Ukrainian diplomat summarized. Aerial footage of Treasure Island shows piles of debris left after Hurricane Helene struck the Florida city and mostly empty roadways as the area braces for Hurricane Milton. The city is still reeling from the devastating flood and wind damage from Helene. Steady rain fell and winds began to gust in the Tampa Bay area Wednesday morning as a mighty Hurricane Milton churned toward a potentially catastrophic collision with the west coast of Florida. Major bridges around Tampa Bay planned to close in the afternoon, she said, and public shelters were open for evacuees. Milton rapidly strengthened in the Gulf of Mexico on Monday, becoming a Category 5 storm on a path toward Florida. Mexican officials organized buses to evacuate people from the low-lying Gulf Coast coastal city of Progreso, on the Yucatan Peninsula, after Mexico's National Meteorological Service said Milton may hit between Celestin and Progreso late Monday or early Tuesday. Celestin, on the western corner of the peninsula, 
is low-lying nature reserve home to tens of thousands of flamingos. Progresso, to the east, is a shipping and cruise ship port with a population of about 40,000. Yucatan State Governor Joaquin Diaz ordered the cancellation of all non-essential activities except grocery stores, hospitals, pharmacies, and gas stations starting around midday Monday. Dozens of residents and tourists lined up with suitcases and other belongings Monday to catch an evacuation ferry off Holbox Island, on the eastern tip of the Yucatan Peninsula. Holbox, popular for its shallow seascapes, may be one of the closest points that Hurricane Milton brushes before moving toward Florida. The low-lying island tends to flood even with a light rain. Off and on resident Marilu Macias was calm and smiling, but was afraid of what Milton could do to the island. We decided it's better to go to someplace safer, Macias said of herself and her daughters. Milton looms in the Gulf less than two weeks after a catastrophic Hurricane Helene swamped the coastline and killed more than 230 people. Hurricane Milton's sustained wind speeds increased to 180 miles per hour Monday afternoon, the the U.S. National Hurricane Center said. The Category 5 storm, located 80 miles off the coast of Progresso, was moving east at 10 miles per hour. According to the National Hurricane Center's Live Hurricane Tracker, Milton will make landfall on the west coast of Florida on Wednesday evening. It's expected to be a Category 3 storm when it hits the shore and will barrel across the state through major cities.